My biggest worry right now, if you ask me what, what keeps me up at night now, it's Iran becoming nuclear. And it's not just missiles, which is what we keep writing about and arguing about. They're going to use missiles. They're going to attack Israel. They're going to attack Saudi Arabia, whatever. My worry is they're going to hand nuclear material off to the terrorists they are presently supplying. <laughs> they are pre presently the biggest state sponsor of terrorism. We know or we fear that they're supplying Assad to kill all those people in Syria. Now, if, if they're supplying them with armaments now and they have nuclear material, why not give it to some of these terrorists, set off a dirty bomb in New York, all uh, uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and then lie about it? Does make you think, right? America's mayor on 9-11, Rudy Giuliani, worried that Iran could be behind a new wave of attacks on the U.S. That is why when uh, claims President Obama snubbed a meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to talk about Iran for a surface, plenty of people got very upset, including Democrats like New York State Assemblyman Dove Heikund. Assemblyman, um, there was no upside to the president denying a meeting with, with the prime minister. The bottom line is, let's get this straight, for all Democrats across America, the president does not like the prime minister of the state of Israel. That is a fact that you cannot deny. And the fact is that Prime Minister Netanyahu, the only democracy in the Middle East, he was elected by the people. But Obama has had a problem with him for years. And the idea, you know, Israel is the country that is being threatened. It's very survival. This is not some politics. Their survival is in jeopardy. You have Iran saying, we are going to wipe you off the face of the earth. And who is going to question that or doubt it? Netanyahu wants to meet with the president. The president should want to meet with the well, president. Well, apparently they had an hour phone call last night. So maybe because of the dust up over this, whatever they feel toward one another, did that phone call ease your fears? Absolutely not. Uh, the last time when the president said he had Israel's back, I became very, very concerned. The bottom line is I do not trust the president of the United States with regard to the security of the state of Israel. Uh, is so when, you're, is when I had Ed Koch here, Assemblyman, you know, I want to I say he this. says the president is very loyal and Jews can rest assured that he is. Well, you have your doubts. Well, Ed Koch, uh, uh, a day before when he supported Bob Turner, the Republican, didn't feel that he was a friend of Israel and then changed his mind literally within moments after that election, after visiting the White House. The bottom line is that the president has shown, look, the, uh, we just had the Democratic Convention. Jerusalem, a fundamental issue. Uh, was taken out of the platform of the Democratic Party. Who was responsible? Is there any doubt in anyone's mind that people in the White House gave the OK? We don't know who gave the OK, but someone in the White House. Something is wrong. And then they take a vote of the delegates. The delegates, my fellow Democrats, chant overwhelmingly when they try to reintroduce Jerusalem. They said no. I would ask the Democratic Party to listen to the majority of the Democrats who don't want Jerusalem on the platform. Something is wrong in my party when an issue as fundamental as Jerusalem that we don't get it. it something is wrong. Good evening. I'm Brett Baer. On this 11th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, there are fears tonight of a different kind of disaster looming in the Middle East. More on the 9-11 remembrances in just a bit. But first, Fox News has learned President Obama has rejected a request for a meeting in New York or Washington with Israel's prime minister, who is sounding new alarms over the prospect of an Iranian nuclear weapon. While White House officials insist it's a scheduling snafu, senior Israeli officials are clearly not pleased. Chief White House correspondent Ed Henry is following this breaking story. Governor. Ted. Just days after taking Jerusalem out of the Democratic platform sparked chaos at their convention. In the opinion of the... Let me do that again. The White House is now dealing with the fallout from a report in the Israeli press claiming President Obama denied a request to meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in New York later this month around the opening session of the UN General Assembly. I think President Obama knows that Prime Minister Netanyahu will ask him, what are you going to do regarding Iran? How long you want us to wait? And maybe he wants to avoid that meeting. I understand he is busy campaigning, but those crucial issues are more important. White House officials confirmed to Fox the two leaders will not be meeting, but insisted the president did not refuse to meet with Netanyahu, noting the president is in New York on Monday, September 24th and Tuesday, September 25th. White House spokesman Tommy Vitor said Netanyahu does not arrive until later in the week, adding, quote, 
They're simply not in the city at the same time. But the president and prime minister are in frequent contact, and the prime minister will meet with other senior officials, including Secretary Clinton, during his visit. An Israeli official told Fox the prime minister made it clear he'll travel to Washington to make the schedule work. And today, Netanyahu had harsh words for the U.S. over its stance on Iran's nuclear program. The world tells Israel, wait, there's still time. And I say, wait for what? Wait until when? Those in the international community who refuse to put red lines before Iran don't have a moral right to place a red light before Israel. The tension comes as the U.N. Atomic Agency today said it has new intelligence suggesting Iran has advanced its work on a nuclear bomb. And while the president used his convention speech to try and smooth things over... Our commitment to Israel's security must not waver, and neither must our pursuit of peace. He and the prime minister have had a series of frosty meetings, which Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney, a longtime friend of Netanyahu, has tried to capitalize on. They now say that uh, they're not certain what the capital of, of Israel might be. I find that one more example of Israel being thrown into the bus by the president. While White House officials sharply denied Romney's characterization, they will not get specific about the red lines that Netanyahu has been demanding. The president's position, unequivocally, is that he is committed to preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. Now, I spoke to a senior official just a few moments ago who would not rule out the possibility that a meeting in Washington could be worked out on Friday, September 28th. But the official noted it's an election year and it's also possible the president could be in a battleground state on that day. Of course, a move like that might only inflame Netanyahu even more. Brett.